good afternoon so is the slide visible yes sir. Okay, so we were discussing about overthinking. So whoever is the new today, just get a just small idea, just just a brief recap. What is overthinking? Overthinking means that we, when we derive a hypothesis function for a given data sample. we are talking about supervised dating so when we are giving a derive a hypothesis function the model complexity that means the nature of the function that means it is it is it linear or it is a polynomial is a kind of polynomial or is a high order polynomial so that means the how complex is your hypothesis function to represent the data but apart from this model complexity if your hypothesis function such such a way is de defined that it going to consider every single data point that means if we have this kind of data samples are given maybe this hypothesis function is very consisting but if there is another data point is here this data point may be erroneously defined or it's a noise or is out layer now if some hypothesis function is defined in this way that sorry that keep this so it is a very complicated or very complex hypothesis function and but take care of every data point very accurately so you can say that it somewhat lose its generality generality in what sense generality means that the distributions of the major data samples are in this place but it is something awkward or something misplaced so the the data points this curve is somewhat general than this curve so there is a some sort of uh problem there is a some sort of uh disadvantage of this kind of uh overfitting or a complex hypothesis function that it give you a very little training error but may have high testing error why is it is because that it the generalization it lose the generalization capacity and why is a high testing error that we can we have discussed in a kind of thing in this similar diagram that since it is the given data sample and this is a kind of curve the this curve is well generalized and it is expected that the data samples or novel data sample or testing samples are coming 
in this area okay but if your card is not generalized or maybe it point given something like that so there is it kind of data. so you see the total distance is very much increased so the testing error will be very much high so that is is called that maybe the training error is very very less is very close to zero but testing error is somewhat high but in the previous case if this is the consisting then the as per our uh, constraint or assumption that testing data points or testing samples are somewhat follow the training distribution the training sample distribution then it expected that the total testing error will not be a very high okay so this is the basic concept of overfitting so as we have this we discussed yesterday's class yesterday no sorry i think tuesday's class so today we continue this lecture and we try to find out what are the different uh, solution exist if a particular model is overfitted so before that we define formally that what is overfitting we, we understand the concept but then we we'll say this is also we have discussed yesterday but still just for a continuation of the lecture a hypothesis function h is said to overfit the training data if there is another hypothesis that's just for whatever i just explained that's let is a two hypothesis function we are assuming h and h bar and we are discuss about that this hypothesis is overfitted or not if training error for h okay is less than this training error of h bar so for training error h bar is high and testing error of h is greater than testing error of h bar if this situation happened okay so more error than h but training data but h bar is less Test error on H testing data situation. And then we can say H hypothesis function is overfitted. Okay. What do we respect to the data sample? Given data sample. Okay. So learning a classifier that classifies a training data perfectly may not lead to the classifier the best generalization. It is very easy to understand. That always remember, even when you are devising or proposing some machine learning algorithm, then always remember your algorithm or performance of the classifier is tested or evaluated on the testing data, not the training data. So that is very important. So importantly, two very important you can say cause or the situation which makes this problem happen one is the the training data is bit noisy so if training data is very much noisy then it have a intention or a, if there is a tendency for your hypothesis function to <coughs> make this noisy data within this distribution so if if they try to do this then definitely the hypothesis function becomes such it generally declines or deviate from the generalization or the 
actual distribution, where with the actual data samples are taken. So this is one of the major aspect, maybe a noisy training data. Another thing, if the training data is very small, that means uh, here we can say uh, with respect to your network. So this particular point has a kind of a another version. What you always remember that if you have a you have a less number of training or leveled training data, then always keep try to keep your network is shallower. Otherwise, there is a enough chance to this particular model become overfitted. Okay, so reason is very obvious. If you ask why, this reason is very obvious. Now you see, if there is a very less number of samples, okay? Now definitely your data or your hypothesis, sorry, your simple data, you can't understand which is the actual data which is the noisy data. Now let, if we consider this is a noise and this to our actual data, it, it is very tough for him to understand this. Okay, it, it generally kind of, this kind of curve will definitely, but it's not required. Actually, if you have this kind of curve is much, much intended. So that is that a number, very less number of training data. Always there is a, tendency to be overfitted if model complexity is too high. That means model complexity, I think this is a more kind of curve, the curve is more degree of polynomial, okay? So simplistically overfitting occurs when the model is too complex, whether underfitting occurs when the model is too simple. Definitely, this is the very easy to understand the whole thing. <laughs> that it is also, you see that if the data, data samples are something like that. Now, if you see, there's a very, this is line. This may be underfitted. But if you put, this is very intended. But if you put, this is overfitted. So this is underfit, this is overfit, and this particular thing is a kind of uh, required. Getting the point, very easy to understand. So training error is not a good predictor of the testing error. And that is also very important. You had a, if your model have a very less training error, that doesn't mean you're going to have a less testing error. It may be either way or other way around also. So that will also be very much careful. So we present these scenarios or these things in a very, uh, if I'm a simplistic way, but this is a very, very important design parameter of your machine learning algorithm. If you understand this trade-off, then you are being a very good classified designer. And if you, if you don't understand this, it will be very, it is not that, <coughs> that you can bypass this issue. Even when we go for next semester, when we go for deep learning thing, we see different, different way to handle our thing. And here of the, most of the conventional machine learning, we'll see that how to handle this overfitting here. So definitely this depends on the, the network you are designing, the model, the architecture you are designing for the classification. So now we mathematically try to formalize it. 
let's consider d the entire distribution of the data d is the distribution and t is the training data okay sign so hypothesis h belongs to your hypothesis class over fits this d in distribution of the data belongs to the h bar that is not h so that there exists an h bar that is not h uh, that existing to this hypothesis class that it means this such that error of the t money training h is less than that what is just right error test oh, sorry train t error t is bar but this is one two is that error d you can say but you can say the test do we are right because the distribution is a data so it is basically is the test error is sample is belongs to d this of h definitely error over test and belongs to d so this is the situation that we have seen and here what we care about most one or two estimate error on full distribution by using the test data set error on test data generalization error one tick so that is the thing so sometime with that error on testing the sample or test is called generalization generalization error and we have to keep it low okay generalization to unseen complex data is what we care about so that is important this generalization to the unseen example or data that is basically testing testing samples is what we care about okay. so if you have any question you can ask so okay the problem of overfitting now we try to analyze this particular thing slowly slowly go to the deeper data overfitting is arguably the most common pitfall in the machine learning why why it is so because we have some uh, some tendency when we are designing our model or kind of machine learning model so temptation to use as much data as possible to train on ignore test data till end so if there is a total data sample we should have give a our training set like this training set and this is a testing set if it was a very tiny testing set maybe there is a problem so temptation to use as much as possible to train on ignore test till end test set too small the data picking is not noticed so that means that means what the testing data may be some sort picking means what it is if this data is not very much uh, well distributed <coughs> that is very interesting one thing um that uh, now let get a example so that we understand this situation well let a stamp filter i got this example in a very good uh, tutorial now some day uh, some engineer is designing a stamp filter and they design their network and they find the testing error is almost zero so they are very happy that done we have a very very good 
but it not always the what it is not exactly depending on this overfitting problem but the the kind of you can say when you are picking up the samples uh, that is very very important how are you going to pick up the data samples for training and testing but what happened now you see in case of uh, spam filter means it is a email spam email filtering okay the date of the when these emails are coming it is very important now if you see that testing data okay that testing data is taken beforehand of this uh, a particular date okay so it may be the case that all the testing patterns data patterns means here what are the patterns of this data pattern means i should not say pattern i should say attributes the data attributes let's say the sender let's say the 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 particular usage of some word something like that that attributes these attributes are very common to the trading data set okay so in this kind of spam filtering it's a time series analysis because the data you should collect that we always try for the future data because the the emails which are coming it is a future email you are you are not we are not going to get the previous emails previous data attributes or email attributes are very known and very it may be so if you say your testing data somehow for some anomaly is belong to the training data then testing error is very less and unknowingly maybe some email you have taken that these emails have similar attributes then the testing error may be less, but that doesn't mean your classifier is a very very well behaving or well performing so that these are the few things that you should very much careful about it is a common error we generally do in our machine learning designing issues you get is when people as a student as a result get a very good result that is very uh we really are afraid of it is not possible okay anyway so another our way the temptation means our intention is to fit very complex hypothesis we always think if we have devised a very complex uh this means very deep deep model now you are more or less all the people you know more interested about deep learning because nowadays everything most of the cases in a different application the huge application areas deep learning over platforms out platforms that conventional server architectures and people are very much obsessed with deep deeper architecture but the one of the major question is is deeper architecture is always good it well performing fine but is is it always is good it is we cannot say that we we really don't have you can say that it is out performing every time but then you have to have very if you really want a very huge network you also be a very important you know, lot of design issues then when time comes we will definitely discuss all these things but here one thing is very important the complex hypothesis function just for a simple thing if you are not complex your network is very accurately then a large or complex hypothesis function is not good 
there is enough chance of overfitting. So in general, the larger the tree, the better the fit. The training data. It is not true because anyway, you are you are given only the training samples, and if it is lose the generality, then your testing result is not that much good as you get for the training. Data. So that is one of the another reason of overfitting. So it is hard to think better to fit to training data as a odds result. Often difficult to fit training data well. So it seems a good fit of the training data means a good result. It's not always true. Good fit of the training data doesn't always mean good testing result. Okay. So this figure we okay. Now this is a very important figure that you can see here. So it is one of the key figure of the machine learning. This is validation set. I'm coming what is validation. Validation means you can say at this moment it is the test set. So validation means as of now with the test becomes the validation next phase. And this is the training. The training, okay? Now you see your tree, tree size. Tree size means what? Increasing tree size, increasing this tree size. Tree means decision tree, means increasing model complexity. If you case, case, if you train the linear regression, then the degree of polynomial. Which represent the hypothesis. So that means it is a model complexity that is increasing. Now, if we increase the model complexity, the error rate is both validation and testing error and training error are keep decreasing. Look. But that is, it is the kind of subtle point or is a threshold point. After that, the training error keep on decreasing. But testing error is stuck. This is the point where the overfitting kicks off. Okay. So performance of validation set is decreased. So this is the point you have to understand. And then it stopped this model complexity to increase. Similar collapse can happen when the training to long in complex have this space with lots of parametric set. So this is doesn't happen with this. Now exactly this is the some uh, diagrammatic justification or and some result by justification that when our this is happening. And this is the condition of our pretty, as we have discussed. Okay. Now we understand what is our pretty. Now we have to, to or how you train the data so that no overfitting and things. Okay. So a few things we'll see in, in our server modeling in this. And some of our uh, things is we see when we do the deeper architecture. But 
cross validation regularization all these topping is the most easy way to handle solution uh, as a handle the overfitting we'll see one by one now k fold cross validation that is very interesting so now we now do so as of now we understand what is training set and what is testing set that total data sample is a supervised setting so the level is also given this is the testing this part and this part is training So this is training set. This is testing set. Let's say if it is a total hundred. Let's say this is seventy and this is one. So one to seventy is this. Seventy to hundred is that. This is the just a hypothetical. Now validation is the kind of thing. Within this training set, we make another group, and we call that this is validation. validation set okay it's called validation set what does this mean it means that we are thinking about that that if we training as a whole then there may be some sort of distribution bias is there distribution bias i this is not a correct word so what i'm trying to say that this data distribution it somewhat follow some thing so why not we put a kind of uh, uh, kind of mock testing within the training set and a rigorous training set if this is validation set this part of the training set what are the result so if this validation set is not here it is here that part is the validation and these are the total thing is that training then what happened so what we'll do we divide the total training set it's a training set as in a k different k equal subgroup s1 s2 s3 dot 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 sk okay and every time and this are the thing this are the training set okay now for round one we use a s1 as a validation set and s minus one is your training and validation set and this part and this part is your testing set okay Third, this is the validation set. Now this part and and so on. We differently S one minus S S one when S one is validation, S minus S one is training, S two when is validation, S minus S one. And every time we get error, error S one, error. S two and dot 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 error. S K. So this error we average it out. So one two K it is sum it up. S is S one. This is S S of error. S is the error. And one by the average test score one by K. So average test error. Okay. And this is our training error. Okay. Or you can say what is the Training score that is also you can so error means it is error. Sometimes you consider the performance. What is the accuracy? That also you can take. Now this is the training accuracy. Now it is basically when why it is when if you see this kind of thing. Now within the training set we have a different uh, portion of the training set you as, as a testing set. now you can say that your training procedure is much more accurate so training data is so so what is we 
stochastic message, a takeaway message. Complex hypothesis fit well fits the train to group of fitting. Simple hypothesis may generalize better, but may tend to group of fitting. So training data samples increase generalization and subjectivity. So that is when that. So what what will be our design criteria? Not to much complex hypothesis number one not too simple hypothesis try to get enough training data sample. With respect to, I'm not writing with respect to model complexity. Okay. So this is one way to handle overfitting. KK fold cross validation. If you have any question, you can ask. Next thing is called regularization. Regularization is another design criteria where we used different setup to handle or to reduce the work. But it's a very interesting. What to do? If, if we just now we are thinking from a very common sense way. So handling overfitting means reducing model complexity. That, that we understand if it is a too much high model. So that means to somewhat reduce number of features because you can say features means if if you see that, that if our h of theta is something um h of theta means h of x i think it's a plus bx plus cx square plus dx cube and so on okay so these features which are very complex so number of features if you say that these two things we put it's a strong straight line so number of features is going to be reduced so what we can say how to reduce the feature one is manually select the which features to keep and which not to which to throw or sometimes we use a model selection model, which we can use some algorithm to select the model. Okay. But another option is regularization. This concept is we keep all the features. Maybe all the features, we don't discard all the features, the value of, so parameter j theta, that is, is given. Works well when we have a lot of features, each of which contributes a bit to the predicting. But we can prioritize this theta j. Which theta j is giving you a more contributory? That you can find out. Okay. Now see. So what is the basic intuition is that? So it is a, a kind of quadratic hypothesis function. It is a fourth, fourth order, just uh, hypothetically I'm saying. Now suppose we have to penalize this theta three, theta four. As theta three and theta four is a very high order thing. Now we have to make it very small. Let we as it small. You have to make it if you really small, 
theta 3 theta 4. So what to do? We had basically this is a minimization function. And if you this theta 3 theta 4, if you make a very high, that means this thing very high, uh, theta 3 square, theta 4 square, if it is the uh, is very high. Then definitely as a minimization function, these values becomes equal to very zero. These values become equal to very zero. So theta 3, theta 4 becomes zero or very close to zero. Otherwise, you cannot minimize it. A very simple way to handle. So this is the concept. I'm not saying in the way how to do that. And we get this kind of more simpler term. So it is a kind of point. So small values of parameter theta will go theta one plus two theta n. Simpler hypothesis, less prone to overfitting. This is the concept. So we make the value of theta zero, theta one, not theta zero, mainly theta one to theta n. We keep the value small. How? So if you take this example, the very old example of this, this is no. We have this is the your hypothesis function. No, cost function, sorry, is a cost function. And we this function is basically okay. So since it's if this is we add it, theta j will be so what can say. Is not constant. So idea is basically that we have this, we have to, this is the your cost function, function that's to be minimized. So in this cost function would be this part we basically add so that this line is a minimum, this regulation parameter and this j is equal to one to n, this theta j square. So if this is, you have to minimize, so definitely theta j will be minimized if you have to minimize this thing. So definitely theta j have to be minimized. So this is the concept. Fitting the data points well, that is the part of this, this part, and the keeping the number of parameter less, that is the contribution of this part, okay? This is the way. Okay, so regularization is basically this regularized linear regression, which use theta to minimize this. This is the regularization uh, for the our linear regression thing. Okay. Well, lambda is set to extremely large value, perhaps not too large for the problem. So let's if lambda is equal to n to the power 10. What happened? All this becomes zero. So theta one, theta two, theta three, theta four, all become zero because if this is very high. Okay, so it is definitely underfit or something like that. So this will be zero, definitely it's underfit. Because it is very highly regular. That is not required, right? but still this is extreme case. Okay, so this is the same thing. If we do this, we change this cost function, so you can say regularized. Regularized cost function for linear regression. So this is the regularized, and we can gradient descent, you can get this. 
values. The same thing here, the same mathematics. And one thing, since it is, it is why it is lambda by em theta j, because it is basically, we take the different derivative. So we take the derivative of this. These things, we take the derivative. So it is, this will be small. So this is the j, 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 j theta, and this is the derivative term. So theta j, this is some of the t. So we will know. Alpha of so this jet is this okay. Okay, this is the Lagrangian expression. So you can see if we if we get this from our from previous, thing. and if we just uh, theta j if we take common from this so you can see that how the sinkage of the theta j how the theta j is being reduced so theta j become theta j minus alpha lambda by n theta j. okay so that is the thing and this lambda is very high definitely it has become very this is G2. So because this particular thing, one minus one by m, this is theta j equal to one minus m. This is total. This 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 particular thing is less than m. So it is theta j is reducing. Okay. Because theta j is one minus less than one. So theta g is, let's say 0.7. So it's reducing. So that is what. I'm so it is the another logistic equation, same equations. Okay. So it's uh, the the last topic to today's class. That is called early stopping. So this is the last another way to handle now what is we know that this thing if the training cycles is going on so you can say some epochs you can say this epochs we are basically training the so so much training we are getting we get better and better result so early stopping is a form of regularization while training a model which is an iterative method, such as gradient descent. Gradient descent is an iterative method. This method updates the model so as to make this better fit the training data for each iteration. So why it is this iterative method work well? How many times you iterate, there is a chance of more accurate fitting, but fitting of the training data. Up to a point, this improves the model performance so since the training epoch is going on this side, so up to this, the training and testing error is basically reducing. Okay. So up to point improve the model performance on the test data. This is also. Now past the point, that point, however, improving the model fit to the training data. So more training data is keep on decreasing. But the testing data is keep on start is increasing. So models fit to training data leads to increased generalized error. That means generalization error bit, that's why it is increasing. Early stopping rules provide the guidance as to how many iteration can be can run before the model begins to work it. So here it is the point that is stop the model. Stop the your model running. So early, that way called early. You stop here. In this figure, it's running around decreasing. Hence the model is overfitting, start overfitting, you should say. So the combat this will stop the model at the point when this starts to happen. So this is the point of, point of stopping. This is the simple concept of all. 
we stop it. Okay, we will just stop here today. We'll continue the next. The next thing. This overfitting will conclude by this. Again, we revisit overfitting and some deeper modules in the next semester. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, sir, will you be sharing the slides of these lectures? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In one, two days, I will send the slides. Okay, thank you, sir.